So uh, we are going to have a little slight change in the program due to some scheduling, and I'm very thrilled to be inviting to the stage uh, a very special woman who I'm sure a lot of you have seen because she did an incredible presentation um, in front of the entire United Nations General Assembly, Kathy Jetnil Kajiner, and she is a spoken word artist from the Republic of the Marshall Islands, and um, as you heard, is also the daughter of the President, Her Excellency, that you heard from earlier. We're so thrilled to have you with us. Thank you. Hello, hello. Do you want to just be right here? Uh, oh, I'm a little nervous now, actually. Uh, thank you. I'm really uh, honored to be here today. Um, this is such an amazing event to be a part of and to hear all of your stories. It was so inspiring. Um, so I just want to give a quick background of my work. Uh, I was raised, I was born in the Marshall Islands and raised in Hawaii, and it was there that I began to write poetry. And poetry became my art form, it became my, a means for myself to understand the world around me. And so when I moved back home to the Marshall Islands after I graduated from college, and that was about 18 years away, uh, that's when I began to confront climate change and see how vulnerable our islands are. And that's when I began to use my poetry to kind of process and understand the struggle. Um, and so I'm a, after I, after I uh, performed at the UN Climate Summit, uh, I began to uh, uh, try to establish my nonprofit, Jyotigu, which is a nonprofit for youth environmentalists uh, in the Marshall Islands. And we, I, I tried to establish this because I saw that I have this platform and I didn't want to be the only Marshallese voice speaking on climate issues. And so the purpose of this uh, organization is to empower other youth. So I'm happy to say that we have two Earth Champions, two youth representatives from our Jochigun organization that are here to at COP. So uh, yeah, it's been great. Um, and now I kind of want to share that, uh, I'm going to be a little bit uh, vulnerable, I guess, and just share that I was in a, a, a very dark place last week uh, after the results of, uh, of the election, honestly. Uh, I was in a dark place because I didn't, I, I wasn't sure what was going to happen to our islands and I wasn't sure what was going to happen to the movement. And uh, I, get, I got these emails saying, we need you to be inspiring. And I didn't know how to be inspiring because I had no hope. And I'm ashamed to say I had no hope at the time. Uh, and I, I talked to my mother and I talked to, you know, members of my delegation and I was just trying to search for inspiration. And the place that I found inspiration was a woman named uh, Lumayo Abwan, and she's a Marshallese woman, an elderly Marshallese woman who survived the nuclear testing. So my mother spoke a little bit on the legacy of nuclear testing in our islands. The U.S. tested uh, over, six, uh, over 60 nuclear weapons after World War II in our islands, completely blasting away and incinerating some of our islands. And then also, a lot of the women had to deal with birth defects after the radiation from the nuclear weapons. Lumayo is, a, is an elderly Marshallese woman who grew up witnessing the nuclear testing and who had, to, um, who had multiple miscarriages, who had lost both of her sisters due to cancer, who were also all fighters you know, against the nuclear legacy. And she still shares her story to this day. And it doesn't matter that so many, there, was, there is no movement behind nuclear issues the way there is this huge movement behind climate change. And yet she still continues to go out there and be vulnerable and to share the horrific trauma of her, of her life. And I thought, well, if she can do it, <laughs> I have no excuses. And also when I came up here and, and began to hear all of your stories and the amazing, passionate work that you all do, I realized I should be ashamed to have lost hope at all because we have such an amazing swell of, of women who are in this movement and I have so much more hope because I attended this event. So thank you so much, Osprey, for asking me to be a part of it. So 
So now I want to share um, a piece that, and I was thinking, you know, what poem should I do? You know, I wasn't sure, and um, I ended up actually wanting to share uh, a poem, the poem that I wrote and performed at the UN Climate Summit, because mostly because as a nod to my mother's speech, um, when she said to empower, we need to uh, mobilize and empower our mothers and daughters. We need to enroll our mothers and daughters into this fight for climate justice, and I fully agree. So this uh, poem is a poem that I wrote dedicated to my daughter, and it was a letter that I wrote to her. And uh, you know, before the leading up to the UN Climate Summit, they had asked me to write a piece that would speak to the climate movement, that would save the world. Literally, they literally said that, um, and that would you know um, that would speak to world leaders. I didn't know how to do any of that. <laughs> So I asked them to just send me images of the climate movement, and I realized, you know, they, so they flooded this Google Drive with just photos and videos of the climate movement, and I realized I really didn't know anything about the climate movement beyond the Pacific. And what I saw amazed me, you know, that there were so many people fighting. And so I realized that this is what I, you know, I, I, I didn't know how to talk to world leaders, but I had just had my daughter, she was seven months old, and I realized I could talk to her. You know, this was the most immediate experience to me. As a poet, that's what you're taught to do, is to write from the personal. And so um, I thought, well, you know, I can tell her about how many people are fighting. You know, what I would want her to know about this movement, that there's so many people behind it. And so I'm dedicating this poem to all the women who are a part of this event. You know, so many passionate, amazing, amazing women. Um, and so this is really dedicated to you all today. Um, yeah. <laughs> Dear Mata Filipinum, you are a seven-month-old sunrise of gummy smiles. You are bald as an egg and bald as a Buddha. Your thighs that are thunder, shrieks that are lightning, so excited for bananas, hugs, and our morning walks along the lagoon. Dear Mata Filipinum, I want to tell me promises you no one will come and devour you. No greedy whale of a company sharking through political seas. No backwater bullying of businesses with broken morals. No blindfolded bureaucracies. Gonna push this mother ocean over the edge. No one's drowning, baby. No one's moving. No one's losing their homeland. No one's gonna become a climate refugee. Or should I say no one else? To the Carteret Islanders of Papua New Guinea and to the Taro Islanders of the Solomon Islands, I take this moment to apologize to you. We are drawing the line here because we, baby, are going to fight. Your mommy, daddy, boo boo, jima, your country, and your president, too. We will all fight. And even though there are those hidden behind platinum titles who like to pretend that we don't exist, who like to pretend that the Marshall Islands, Tuvalu, Kiribati, Maldives, Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines, the floods of Algeria, Colombia, Pakistan, and all the earthquakes and hurricanes and tidal waves didn't exist? Still, there are those who see us. Hands reaching out, fists raising up, banners unfurling, megaphones booming, and we are canoes blocking coal ships. We are the radiance of solar villages. We are the fresh, clean soil of the farmer's past. We are petitions blooming from teenage fingertips. We are families biking, recycling, reusing, engineers dreaming, designing, building, artists painting, dancing, writing, and we are spreading the word. And there are thousands out on the street marching hand in hand, chanting for change now, and they're marching for you, baby. They're marching for us because we deserve to do more than just survive. We deserve to thrive. Dear Mata Filipino, you are eyes heavy with drowsy weight, so just close those eyes and sleep in peace because we won't let you down. You'll see. Thank you.